when you do the process of proving something by mathematical induction, there's four steps that we follow. And let me see if I can just go through the steps real quick with you. The first step is you want to show that it's true for the first term, so n equals 1. Because if the formula doesn't work for the first term, then you know it's, it's just not true, so there's no sense in proceeding from there. Okay, so then you go to the step number two, and you make this assumption. You say, let's assume that this pattern, okay, this, this theorem, this formula is true for n equals k. Now, n is the number of terms, and k represents like a, you know, like a set number of terms, like five terms, ten terms, like, like a fixed number of terms. And this is called the mathematical induction assumption. Just I abbreviated it here, MIA, mathematical induction assumption. So you make an assumption that it's true, you know, and you can show that it's true for two terms, three terms, four terms. But when we get to step number three, what we're trying to do is we're trying to prove or show that it's true for n equals k plus one. So that means like one term beyond that fixed number of terms, k, okay? Because if it works for one term beyond that, It'll work for one term beyond that and beyond that ad infinitum, right, forever. So then the last step, once you've proven this step number three, this is the bulk of the proof. This is usually the, the biggest part of the proof. The last step is just to restate, therefore, that's what these three dots represent, therefore, by the process of mathematical induction and restate what it was that you were trying to prove originally, okay, um, in the proof. So let's go ahead and get into this example. Here what we're trying to prove is that 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus dot 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 plus 3n, okay, equals, and this is a formula for the sum of all these terms. Okay, so let's see if we can prove this. So first step, step number one, I'll label the steps. We're going to say show true, okay, show true for n equals 1. So I'm going to put 1 in right here. This is our formula for finding any term. So I'm just going to say 3 times 1. And then this represents the sum of all the n terms. In this case, just the sum of the first one term. <laughs> okay, so 3 times 1, 1 plus 1, all divided by 2. So what we get here is we get 3 equals, and this is uh, 3 times 2 divided by 2, and you can see the 2's cancel. So 3 equals 3. I'm just going to put a little check mark. Okay, so are you with me so far? Uh, this is the probably the easiest step, right, just to show that it works for the first term. But your teacher could trick you and just give you a formula that just doesn't work. And you'd say, well, you know, it doesn't work for the first term, so it's not true, right? Okay, let's go to step number two. So step number two, we're just going to, and you want to write these little statements in here. This is important for the proof. You don't want to just do it. You want to say, okay, show true for n equals one, assume true, okay, for n equals k. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this formula, but instead of using n, which is more like a generic uh, way of saying n number of terms, you know, any number of terms. We're going to say more for like a, a set number or a fixed number of terms. We're going to go up to the kth term, okay, whatever that represents. Could be 10 terms, 20 terms, but like a fixed number, okay. So let's go ahead and replace n with k because we're just going up to, to k number of terms. So that's our mathematical induction assumption. We could write MIA here, okay. Okay, now we're on to step three. So step three, we're gonna write show true or prove true, okay, for n equals k plus one. So we're going to the k plus one term, the one term beyond k terms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this formula, three plus six plus nine plus 12 plus dot, 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 plus three k, that's up to the kth term, okay, whatever k is, 10. But now we're gonna go one additional term, k plus one. Now if we add all these terms up to the k plus one term, the sum should be three times k plus one, because that's how many terms we have, k plus one plus one all over two. So you can see I just replaced n with k plus one because that's how many terms we're adding up. Now this is the bulk of the proof. And let me just give you some pointers here. A lot of times students, they forget to write this kth term and then to write the k plus one term. They'll just go right up to k plus one, skipping over this term. So you wanna write all this and I'll show you why. The reason is is because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say, all right, the sum of the first k terms right here, what does that equal? 
Well, we can see here from the previous step, it equals 3k times k plus 1 divided by 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace that, okay, right there. The sum of these first k terms equals this. So we're going to write that right here, 3k times k plus 1 divided by 2, okay, plus this term here, that's our k plus 1th term, 3 times k plus 1 equals, and we're trying to show that it equals this right here. Okay, so you're with me so far? So this is just algebra, and I just want to state something here for you that uh, you don't want to necessarily foil and multiply all this out. What you can do sometimes is you can take what you have right here and work with that. You can say, well, hmm, I know that I'm trying to show that it equals this. I can see I already have a k plus 1 in both of these groups. Maybe I can factor that out so I don't have to multiply this out and then try to like, you know, factor it from there. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom times 2. Okay, this way we get a common denominator. Okay, so now if I can just rewrite this, we've got 3k times k plus 1 plus 6, okay, because 2 times 3 times k plus 1 all divided by 2. We got a common denominator. Now when you look at this group and this group, see how you have like a 3 in common you can factor out and a k plus 1? Let's factor that out. So what we have here is we have 3 times k plus 1 times, we're left with k from this group plus 2 from this group all divided by 2. Now you can see we're almost there. All I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rewrite k plus 2. 2 is the same as 1 plus 1. So I'm just going to break this down so it looks a little bit more like the right side. So we've got k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 all divided by 2. Okay, so now we're, we've proved it. You can see that these are the same. So the last step, step number 4, is to restate what it is that you were trying to prove. So I'm just going to put it right here. Step number 4, therefore, Okay, there's a lot of different symbols that you can use, but this is a common one. Therefore, you can say, by the process, okay, by the process of mathematical induction, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to restate what it is that we were trying to prove. 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus dot, 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 plus 3n equals, and the formula for the sum is 3n times n plus 1, all divided by 2. And that's it. We proved it. So let's take a look at another example. I'm going to erase the board, and I'll be back in right half a second, okay? Okay, in this next example, what we're going to do is we're going to prove this other theorem here, which is 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed plus 2 to the fourth plus dot, 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 all the way to 2 to the n minus 1 power. If you were to add up all these terms, we're going to show that the sum equals 2 to the nth power minus 1. So notice this n minus 1 is an exponent. This minus 1 is just over here to the side. So we're going to go through the same four steps. Step number 1, we're going to show that it's true for n equals 1. So let's do that here. And I, I would write again these steps out. I would say step number 1, show true for, okay, for n equals 1. So I'm just going to put 1 in for n here, and I've got 2 to the 1 minus 1 equals, and this is the sum of the first 1 terms, which is 2 to the first minus 1. 1 minus 1 is, of course, 0. 2 to the first is 2. Anything to the 0 power is 1, and 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, so step number 1, done. Okay, so now step number 2, we're going to assume true for n equals k. This is our mathematical induction assumption, and we want to start off by writing that we're doing that. So I'm just going to abbreviate mathematical induction assumption 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed plus dot 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 plus 2 to the k minus 1 plus 2 to the k. Well, let's just go right to there, okay? <laughs> Stop there for a second. So we're, all we're doing is replacing... <clears throat> n with k. So we're just showing that it works for the first k terms. Okay, so all we did was replace n with k, and we're just saying that the sum of the first k terms, this is true. So that's our assumption. So that's done. Now step number three, here's where the bulk of our proof. We're going to prove true, or show true, okay, for 
n equals k plus 1. Okay, so now we're going to go beyond the kth term, one additional term. If it works for that, it's going to work for one beyond that, one beyond that, forever and ever, and then we've proved it. So by the process of mathematical induction. So let's do that. We've got 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed plus dot 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 plus 2 to the k minus 1. That's the kth term. Plus, we're going to go one more term beyond that. 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1 equals 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. Okay, so just to restate, this is the first k terms. This is the k plus 1th term. I put k plus 1 in for n because n is whatever term you're on. So the k plus 1th term. And then this over here on the right side is the formula for the sum of not just n terms, not just k terms, but k plus 1 terms. Okay, so are you with me so far? Okay, this is the bulk of the proof, and I just want to point out the uh, key points here, and that's that a lot of students, they forget this part right here. Okay, I used to forget this part myself. I'd say, okay, the sum of the first k terms here, what does that equal? We showed here that it equals 2 to the k minus 1. So let's do that substitution, 2 to the k minus 1, plus, this is the k plus 1th term, so that's 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1, equals, and we're trying to show that it equals this right here, Okay, so 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. Okay, so you're with me so far? Now, 1 minus 1, of course, equals 0, right? So this is just 2 to the k, this is 2 to the k, this is minus 1, and we're trying to show it equals this. But because we have two of these, you could really write this as 2 times 2 to the k minus 1. Okay, are you with me so far? So we have one of these plus one of these, we have two, two to the k. And two is really like two to the first. When you multiply and you have the same base, you add the exponents. So this is gonna be two to the k plus one, okay, so I'm adding, minus one equals, and that's what we were trying to show that it, that it equaled. So we proved it.